first known abduction. The X had a long needle. And the abductees who discovered proof that aliens are manipulating the entire course of their lives. They had been abducted since childhood, separately, brought together, and made to interact. I'm completely convinced that they have planned Claire in my meeting. We'll investigate the alleged alien implants used to track humans. Triangle in the hand is like an identification for them. There's tissue missing from my hand. And go into the operating room as surgeons remove an actual implant. You'll see our final analysis of the evidence in our Unex Report as we uncover the facts about alien contacts on Unexplained Mysteries Touched by an Alien. Alien abduction is no longer just a story created in our science fiction. More and more psychiatric professionals refuse to discount the tales they hear from victims describing hostile encounters with aliens. The details of most abductees are striking in their similarity. I mean, this is terror. You're being kidnapped. You don't know what's going to happen. I thought, this is it. I'm going I'm to die of a heart attack or something because it was not human. Transported to an alien craft, some report being subjected to horrific experiments and invasive probes. I hate what they do to me. I hate what they do to my mind. I hate what they do to my body. And it was not a fun experience. This is not something I would wish on anybody. But are the aggressive tactics that accompany most UFO encounters drowning out a more important message? Every single abductee says over and over, if they would just walk in the front door, not scare me, not paralyze me, and sit down and say, look, we have a problem, uh, would you help? Every, practically every abductee said if they would ask my permission and explain, I might say, sure, I'll help you. Northern Wisconsin, Karen Klinger and Dennis Morosqua sneak away from a family vacation. The young couple notice something in the night sky. This bright orange star that was uh, along the horizon of the trees on the other side of the lake zipped right to the top of our heads and we looked up. I think the best way I could describe the flight is like that of a dragonfly. It was just, it would zip here, stop, zip here, stop, zip, 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 really fast. And I'm like, what are we watching? And we finally started calling my folks down from the cabin so they could watch. And my mother was a little scared. Denny's sister's boyfriend went into the house and got a large beam flashlight and flashed at the UFOs three times. Suddenly they just completely disappeared. And about maybe a couple of seconds later, they flashed back at us the same amount of times as we had flashed at it. By this time, we knew we were watching something that we had no explanation for. It was really strange and definitely appeared to be intelligently controlled. After the incident, Morosqua and Klinger felt disoriented and ill. Later, when the couple talked about the incident, they realized that they could not account for several hours during that night. At one point we looked up and the moon was directly in line with the um, rear view mirror of the car. And by the time we got back to the lake, which shouldn't have been very long, the moon was setting. It never occurred to me until that moment that there could possibly be some missing time involved. I felt sick. I felt, I mean, I literally felt nauseated at the thought of it. In search of more answers, Dennis and Karen each underwent hypnosis. Compared notes later, they corroborated very closely with some of the points that Karen uh, had brought up under hers. We both got these images of a grid-like pattern. The apparent purpose of their abduction was to make those touched the carriers of a message. The Earth is connected to the universe. If you feel that this has happened to you, by all means, do whatever it takes to uncover the information because it's worth the risk. Jeannie Robinson has been given a message. 
she says she has been abducted several times, dating back to childhood. Encounters flooding her mind with information. I started getting these thoughts in my head that didn't seem to belong to me. But I write it all down. I've been writing it down. Jeannie believes she knows why these visitors have come to Earth. We have researched your physiology to understand the elements that are parallel to our own. We mean you no harm, but we must save ourselves from extinction. When acceptance of the reality of our kind is tolerated within your population, a more open relationship can begin. For experiencer Steve Neal, the message was directed toward human beings. He was told that our race is in need of help. We've separated ourselves from nature. We have the sense that nature's over there and we're over here and, and that really this world was kind of made for us to do whatever we want, to trash it in the name of personal gain and profit. And I think that we're in danger of becoming extinct like the dinosaurs. On many of his abductions, Neil has been shown horrific images of the future. They take me into the scene, whether it's, you know, if it's the world after a, a nuclear war, they take me right down the streets and I see all the bodies and the whole bit. And I realize that they're trying to give me a message, you know, and that I'm supposed to take this message and take this possible future and do something about it, try to prevent it. For other abductees, similar terrifying visions have forced them to join a support group. People have been told that there's going to be um, devastation that there's going to be tremendous earth changes they, they they are shown these images it's something that's put into their mind by the abductors it's very difficult to explain could an alien race actually be abducting human beings in order to warn us of the earth's future these abductees believe this message and believe there is a solution i think it's very important to point out that all of these images and so forth of disaster or this or other can be reversed. It's not written in stone. This is our planet. And uh, we are very powerful beings and we have to start using that in a positive way because then we can create beauty, we can create love, we can create serenity instead of destroying everything and complaining that there's no serenity. Members of this group have accepted the knowledge they have been given. Now they want the world to know. They're trying to not only help out their race, but help out us in case we can't live in this environment anymore. We might need different kinds of bodies. We might need different kinds of adaptations. We might need to be able to handle different kinds of climates. For the abductee community, the debate is only beginning. What do the aliens really want? We will continue covert contact for now. Soon we will be able to establish a more active and cohesive relationship, an equal partnership within the alliance of intelligent life forms. Coming up, what really was behind the otherworldly ordeal that this woman endured? He said, don't be afraid. We're not going to harm you. We just want to do some tests. Are the clues to the first recorded abduction locked in the fibers of this dress? These two women say they've been linked for life by an alien experiment. But they had been abducted since childhood, separately, brought together, and made to interact. Are ETs trying to teach us a lesson? The message is, the sandbox that you're littering is not your own. And are aliens tracking us with implanted transmitters? It's probably... He turned my eyes up inside my brain. I have never seen anything such as this come out of anybody. And later, see exclusive footage of an actual implant extraction. We'll wrap it all up with a breakdown of the evidence in our Unex report. Stay tuned for more on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries, touched by an alien. No solid explanation can be given for the abduction phenomenon. While the public brushes most cases aside, many prominent researchers are becoming believers. When I 
began studying abductions, I expected these cases to turn out to be some kind of psychological phenomenon, possibly hoaxes, but certainly uh, nothing more serious than that. There was something really peculiar here. I kept seeing a consistency in these things that I didn't expect to see. And the people became, seemed so sincere and uh, so normal that it became very difficult to attribute these reports to anything other than a genuine experience. Reports of extraterrestrials may not be a recent occurrence. Evidence suggests that the alien phenomenon dates back hundreds of years. The concept of being abducted by some strange beings, call them supernatural beings if you will, has been with the human species from, from its beginnings. Folklore is full of cases where people are kidnapped by fairies and carried off to a fairyland that is in some ways very much like the uh, interior of a UFO or the other world that people see when they're taken on a UFO otherworldly journey. They lose a period of time very similar to the stories of, of UFO abductions. Most people have had very few truly unusual things happen to them that they could not explain. Most people do not see balls of light that they can't explain. Most people don't see small beings standing around their bed or on their couch. Most people don't have odd missing time experiences of two, three, or four hours, uh, which they cannot account for. That, that normally does not happen to people. But for abductees, they have these experiences often. Uh, they, they have a lifetime of them. Famed journalist C.D.B. Bryan was an abduction skeptic. It just was inconceivable to me that people were being scooped up by UFOs and having these strange medical procedures performed on them. But after attending an alien abduction conference at MIT, Brian's views were changed forever. It sounded to me like a perfect New Yorker piece of little green men at MIT. I didn't for a minute take it seriously. But in the course of the three, four days that the conference uh, took, I moved more and more towards accepting that there might be a phenomenon here that is unexplained and less and less away from the fact that they're all stark waiting in it. These people were quite convincing. Possibly the most convincing story came from Indian Head, New Hampshire, the site of the first recorded instance of alien contact with humans. Betty and Barney Hill were driving home one night, nearly 42 years ago, when they were blinded by a brilliant light. As it came out over the highway and stopped, we looked up and we could see a curved picture window, a red light on each side. So Barney took the binoculars to get out of the car to try to identify this craft, and he could see a group of men standing in the window looking down at him. And at that moment, he became fearful. He had the impression they were trying to capture him. The terrified couple jumped back into their car and raced away from the scene. But on arriving home, they discovered several strange marks on the trunk of their car and a mysterious substance on Betty's dress. They also could not account for three hours that had passed. We just had a feeling of contamination. So I said to Barney, this sounds weird. And I don't know why I'm saying it. We've been touched. Somehow we've been touched. The Hills experience led them to seek the help of a noted psychiatrist, Dr. Benjamin Simon. Their hypnotherapy sessions revealed a trauma unlike any on record. We go deeper and deeper, deeper asleep. Looks like in big, big pancake. The, the, the cow motor died. This creature, this leader is telling me something. Just stay there, he's saying to me. We're not going to harm you. We just want to do some tests. And they're taking me up to the object. Yes, All right. I'll take it my head. Just All right. Pull All the right. binoculars away. God, give me strength. Pull it down. Run. It's my God. Give me strength. I gotta get away. 
One of the alien tests appeared to be a form of amniocentesis. They examined us as a long needle. It's bigger than any needle I've ever seen. And he said, my nails, look at my nails. <laughs> and I'm crying and I tell him it's hurting, it's hurting, it's hurting, it's hurting, it's hurting. The memories recalled under hypnosis were so traumatic, Benny and Barney were not allowed to hear their own tapes until months later. Word of their experience quickly leaked out, triggering a frenzy over their claims. But well, we became known almost immediately. Like Barney and I would go out to eat and people would come up and ask for our autograph. What did the aliens want with the hills? And what was the purpose of the tests? The last remaining piece of evidence of the Hill abduction sits in this closet. Could the dress worn by Betty Hill during her abduction yield any answers about the alien experiments? And you can see here the blue, and this is where it became stained by the pink powdery substance. This is a place I cut out and sent it to a lab. They were unable to analyze it. They have no idea what caused the pink stain. Next. On Unexplained Mysteries, this abductee claims to have been given special powers. I was told that I would have an energy and that I would be able to help people who are ill. We'll hear from the co-workers with a mysterious link to their past. We both meandered away from the picnic area uh, into the woods and uh, were subsequently abducted from that clearing together. I was that other child. And later, the horror of being implanted with an alien tracking device. And I cried and I screamed and I got very scared because I didn't know what was going on. I got it. Yeah, that's it. Triangular. I wonder what it is. And finally, we'll put it all in perspective in our exclusive Onyx Report. Coming up on Unexplained Mysteries. Experts think is the reason for the spiraling number of reported abductions. An alarming trend is developing. Friends and even entire families recall being taken. Well, the issue of shared abductions is something we should sort out here. Many, many, many people are abducted with other abductees. I felt when I first met Diana that I must have met her somewhere before or seen her somewhere before. I felt that I knew her quite well, but I couldn't explain that. It was sort of, I know this person. And she's very comfortable around the horses. And it was sort of an instant recognition. And I hired her that day. Claire worked on the ranch for four years. Then a nighttime incident on a dark road changed her life. On my way home, fairly early in the evening, I saw lights. I pulled over to the side of the road and was blinded by these lights. But I, I was frozen to the spot. I didn't know what was happening. After the encounter, Claire got sick and remained disoriented for days. I think both of us thought she was going crazy. Um, too much stress that, you know, maybe she'd had a blackout. She also could not account for five hours of missing time lost during her short drive. She was reporting to me that... She seemed to have seen some strange things. She had memories of this weird hand that she drew. And in another puzzling twist, Diana began to experience physical changes. Could these events be related? My eyes had improved dramatically. And I could think of no other rational explanation why my, my eyesight was also improving. Unless I too was being abducted. Claire and Diana decided to undergo hypnotic regression therapy to help explain their mystery. And sure enough, the first memory I had was screaming because no. I had alien eyes right in front of my face and I couldn't get away from them. Robert. What are they doing to you? What are they doing oh. to you? Doing something to my head. You're okay. After Diana's graphic visions of alien experiments retrieved under hypnosis, she discovered corresponding scars on her wrists. A childhood memory may unlock a key piece of evidence 
about patterns of abduction. When I was about 12 years old and had been on a picnic with some friends uh, from school, I saw a little girl coming toward me and she was wearing a blue uniform. She had some kind of an accent that I thought might be British. Without stopping to think or discuss uh, why we were doing this, we both meandered away from the picnic area uh, into the woods and uh, were subsequently abducted from that clearing together. And when Claire described to me what this other little English girl was wearing, I then went to the closet and pulled out a jacket that exactly matched her description. She described to me how she used to dress going to school in England at that time, and I didn't know she attended school in England when she was nine years old. I was that other child. We found a pattern that they had been abducted since childhood, separately, brought together, and made to interact as if the aliens were interested in human relationships and human friendships. I'm completely convinced that they have planned Claire in my meeting um, since they started, since we were such small children. I think it's amazing that we met again in this, in this life, in this world, uh, although I can't explain it. I woke up in the middle of the night and I felt that there was someone alongside of the bed. This is Judy. By her request, her real name will not be used. And I reached my right hand out and I touched the shoulder of someone who was probably the size of a five-year-old. Like many who report alien contact, her first experience was traumatic. I was paralyzed. I couldn't move. It was total terror. But I didn't know at the time what was going on because I didn't know about alien abductions. Judy says years later she was subjected to one final medical procedure. And he was putting in um, what appeared to be laser type objects in my brain. He put one in each temple, one here, and one in the back. And I was told that I would be able to help people who are ill. Some abductees feel that after the return from abduction event, that they have increased powers, psychic powers or healing powers. This is extremely unusual. It's something that uh, we can't dismiss out of hand, and it might be related to the abduction phenomenon. Judy's special abilities have helped many people. After about three minutes, I noticed I was beginning to feel very warm, and the area under her hands was intensely warm. And then my whole body began to feel um, tingly and just relaxed. And gradually the nausea and the sickness was just disappearing, even in 12 hours. Is Judy's gift an indication of the good intentions of aliens? Or is it an extraterrestrial warning about the future? It was almost as though they were saying, ready or not, here we come. Coming up, the touched people who are taken by aliens over and over. I call myself an experimenter because they're not taking me unwillingly. Um, I go quite willingly. The messages given to those chosen for abduction. The message is, wake up, grow up. The sandbox that you're littering is not your own. The experts examine the alien agenda. It's the human race, uh, as we have known it, is becoming not extinct. It, it can't survive. And later, witness a secret operation to extract an extraterrestrial tracking device. What makes me think that this is extraterrestrial is the fact that I have never seen anything such as this come out of anybody. Then you'll get our ultimate roundup of the facts. Our Unex Report, coming up on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries, touched by an alien. Extraterrestrials trying to send us an urgent message. A 
I woke up terrified, absolutely terrified. Light came in, bed shaking. It's kind of like it all happened at once. I opened my eyes and up on my wall, I saw the face of an ET very clearly. For a couple of weeks, I was real scared of the dark. It was a real adjustment. Shannon Hernandez came to terms with her experience with the help of her mother, Debbie McGill. Debbie recalls being taken repeatedly throughout her own life. She feels her contact with aliens was a positive experience. Abductee is, it has a negative connotation to it. it. It means stolen. I prefer to call myself an experiencer because they're not taking me unwillingly. Um, I go quite willingly. Abduction counselors say that this is an important trend. Some people's experiences can truly be described as abductions. They are taken kicking and screaming, struggling against their will. Others evolve over time as they understand what is happening to come very cooperatively and become uh, associated with the beings that they're working with in a, in a participatory role. Over a series of therapy sessions with Dr. Richard Boylan, Shannon explored the visions shared by the aliens. Do you notice anything about you? Pictures. Do you know why you're seeing these pictures? Mm, to learn. This is about the future? Yeah. How far ahead? Way distant in the future? Not way distant. Pretty close in the future? Next few years. Based on the pictures, what would you say is coming up in the next few years? major changes ge geological changes is there some kind of overall message you take from this or lesson yeah not to worry things will be okay boylan sees similarities in the experiences of abductees ets give a variety of different kinds of messages such things as earth changes uh, cataclysms uh, geological weather um, epidemics uh, Social unrest wars uh, have all been shown to experiencers. Debbie believes the aliens use telepathy to transmit their apocalyptic prophecies. Did the ETs communicate with you while you were seeing these pictures? Yes. And what was the flavor of their communication? Any general flavor? A sense flavor? of urgency. Urgency. But urgency yeah, for what? For me to understand something. Dr. John Mack, a psychiatrist at Harvard Medical School who works with abductees, believes there is an alien message to be decoded. I thought this is crazy. I mean, I thought this is not possible. And I've seen many, many cases and worked for two years before I said, look, there's a mystery here. I can't explain this. There's something like what they're saying seems to be happening to them. I had this flashback of being on this table, being surrounded by these beings. Joe is a patient working with John Mack. Little gray guys with big dark eyes and one of them's putting a needle in my neck. He feels he has been abducted regularly since childhood. I would have experiences that were so real, that were so lucid, they were every bit as real as me talking to you now, and yet I would dismiss them because they were so out of context. Joe has also come to identify with his alien abductors. Because there's a part of me that's terrified and doesn't understand, and yet there's this other part of me that they've already explained the procedure to and why. Once they begin to come to terms with their terror of, of the trauma, the experience tends to transform. They feel they're somehow connected to these beings. It was the most profound experience of my life. Although the, the, the experiences don't fit our notions of reality, there's no, no reason to believe that, that they're not telling the truth or that something occurred to them that uh, is real and they're telling it truthfully. The message is clear. We are told that the human experience, the human race, uh, as we have known it, is becoming or soon to be non-viable, not extinct. It, it can't survive. And it appears that these future scenes are either probable futures that will happen unless we clean up our act. My own sense of it, and this is the purely speculative, is that we are also being given a choice to change our ways. The message is... Wake up, grow up. The sandbox that you're littering is not your own. That you are not alone. Next on Unexplained Mysteries.
Our abductees returning with alien devices hidden deep inside their bodies. There are alien implants. They are tracking us. The one that was placed in my ear, it was um, maybe six or eight inches long. It was a cylinder type thing. It was like a drill, and it was very painful. And are these objects proof of the abduction phenomenon? Watch exclusive footage as one surgeon removes what many believe to be alien implants. Finally, we analyze the evidence in our UNEX report on unexplained mysteries. Unexplained mysteries touched by an alien. Not only are humans reporting to be contacted by aliens, they are being implanted with tracking devices within their bodies. When you experience an implant, it feels as if something is being put in your body, and it was very painful. I'd have to say it's probably between my eyes, up inside my brain. And I cried and I screamed and I got very scared because I didn't know what was going on. The researchers that are studying these phenomena uh, say that uh, there are alien implants they are tracking us what are these devices and why are these people being tracked two women make their way home along a deserted road this was a cold november night we both noticed a large light in the sky at that point the light descended at a rapid pace it just dropped from the sky the car just illuminated, and I grabbed my friend's hand, and I said, oh, my God, not again. This is Wendy. She requested we not use her real name to protect her identity. Wendy has endured repeated abductions. After the ordeal on the road, she feels aliens can locate her anywhere, anytime. These pictures show the odd scars that appeared the following day. Are these signs of implantation? My hand was inflamed with a uh, triangle shape just below my first knuckle. The triangle in the hand is like an identification for them. There is tissue missing from my hand. It's indented. You can feel this. It's obvious. For abduction survivors, memories of these procedures are especially traumatic. These memories made me almost go insane. It led me to a hypnotherapist and she helped me in retrieving the whole picture. I remember being laid on a table and then being laid down in the air with no table underneath me. They were doing something to my ear. My brain was jammed and I couldn't, I couldn't function. I woke up Sunday morning with blood on my pillow. And I, as I went into the bathroom, I flipped on the light and there was blood all over my face and my cheek up to my ear. It sounds very much like when an animal gets tagged in the sea or the wild, uh, that that's what's happening to us also. And there have been many thousands of people coming forward that say they've been implanted. I was absolutely frightened. I knew exactly what it was. I am afraid. I'm afraid for my family. So there are very few friends that I have told about the experience, and the ones that I have told they don't come around anymore. There are doctors who take it seriously, but they don't want to go public on it. There are surgeons around that will do these implant removals. These uh, people who've been abducted will be treated, taken care of. What we saw when we removed the objects is uh, quite different than anything that I had ever seen before. This surgeon wishes to keep his identity concealed. He will attempt the removal of three implants from two patients. These are the actual x-rays. This is a foreign body at the level of the base of the second metacarpal bone. This is the uh, object that we are going to remove. We were extremely interested in uh, documenting the procedure with uh, all available means. We used video still photography. In a two-hour procedure, three metallic objects are harvested from the two patients. I got it. Yeah, that's it. Triangular. I wonder what it is. 
initial incision was made uh, to recover the largest of the foreign objects. And upon removal, the uh, patient uh, literally came up off the table. This was most unusual. The only possible way that this could happen is that the object uh, must have been in some direct connection with a nerve. Mike Evans assisted in the operation. What makes me think that this is extraterrestrial is the fact that I have never seen anything such as this come out of anybody. These objects were encased in a very dense, dark gray cocoon. And it was so dense that uh, when I tried to remove this cocoon to uh, look at the uh, metal inside, I could not cut through it with a surgical blade. The implants recovered from both subjects were nearly identical. I think it has some frightening uh, aspects to it. How would an identical object get in a man and get in a woman? Different areas, different times. The odds of that are so extraordinary. Can surgery free abductees from the horror of a return visit? The answers are imperative for those still suffering the trauma of repeated abduction. If you are tagged, then they will find you. It doesn't matter where you go. You can go anywhere you want to. But the world is round. You cannot hide. When we come back, the Onyx Report examines the facts and addresses the mysteries. Is alien contact with humans part of an otherworldly research project? Are the people who were contacted by aliens carriers of messages about the future? And why are some people being implanted with tracking devices? We'll bring you everything we've learned from their visits in our Unex Report, next on Unexplained Mysteries. And now for the Unex Report. The alien abduction phenomenon has exploded. Nowhere is this more apparent than on the World Wide Web. A simple search on the internet finds hundreds of websites dedicated to alien abductions. Many display detailed artwork portraying visitors from other worlds. From the common gray to the less common reptilian, these vivid pictures tell a terrifying story. And there are sites that explore common symptoms of abductees. Ask yourself if you've ever experienced missing time, had unusual nosebleeds, experienced sleep disorders, or dreamt of catastrophes. According to this site, you may have been abducted. As the information increases and the victims continue to come forward, alien abductions can no longer be dismissed as mere hallucinations. Some people's experiences can truly be described as abductions. I mean, I've seen many, many cases and worked for two years before I said, look, there's a mystery here. I can't explain this. There's something like what they're saying seems to be happening to them. And for the taken, it is becoming imperative to share their stories. I was blinded by these lights, but I, I was frozen to the spot. I didn't know what was happening. And he could see a group of men standing in the window looking down at him. And at that moment, he became fearful. He had the impression they were trying to capture him. To some, these ETs strictly come in peace with warnings for our future. I started getting these thoughts in my head that didn't seem to belong to me. I'm supposed to take this message and take this possible future and do something about it. The message is wake up, grow up. The sandbox that you're littering is not your own. Other experts contend that man is the subject of alien research. I mean, this is terror. You're being kidnapped. You don't know what's going to happen. We are told that the human experience, the human race uh, as we have known it, is becoming or soon to be non-viable, not extinct. We, we can't survive. They're trying to not only help out their race, but help out us in case we can't live in this environment anymore. In a more disturbing trend, abductees describe being subjected to cruel and shocking experiments. They were doing something to my ear. My brain was jammed, and I couldn't, I couldn't function. 
it was um, maybe six or eight inches long. It was a cylinder type thing. It was like a drill. And it was very painful. And I'm crying and I tell her it's not I get out And it was not a fun experience. This is not something I would wish on anybody. And some fear they are under constant extraterrestrial surveillance. And there have been many thousands of people coming forward that say they've been implanted. Triangle on the hand is like an identification for them. It's indented. You can feel this. It's obvious. I hate what they do to me. I hate what they do to my mind. I hate...